evening, everyone. My name is Major Jasmine Small Armstrong, and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for Recruitment here at New Mexico Military Institute, better known as NMMI. We are so glad you could join us tonight in learning more about our four-year preparatory boarding high school and our two-year junior college program. With us this evening are some of our cadets and alumni who will share with you why they chose NMMI, NMMI for their future. Not every student who comes to NIMI is focused on a military career. We know we have military in our title, but a lot of students use our foundation of leadership, excellence, and solid academic base as a springboard for other pursuits. These cadets can talk about why they picked a military school, even though they're not heading into the military. We have excellent programs for military preparation, our early commissioning program through our Army ROTC and our Service Academy Preparatory Program, but many cadets don't choose that route. In fact, a number of our cadets, over 80%, do not go on into the military. As a note, if you're interested in either of those programs, we would love to talk to you more about them, or you can always watch one of our previously recorded YouTube videos, um, our live sessions about the programs on our website at nmmi.edu slash live. So tonight we wanna hear your questions about NMMI. What do you wanna know about our school? Ask us on social media using hashtag NMMI future, post them in the YouTube chat or snap them to us at NMMI Live. Um, this is a chance for you to get to know more about our school and what we're all about. All right, so let's get started by having our partic uh, participants this evening introduce themselves. Ariana? Hi, my name is Ariana Lingowski. I'm from Carlsbad, New Mexico, and this is my third year at the Institute. Hi, my name is Megan Lynch. I am a, I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and this is my fourth year at the Institute. Hey, I'm Connor Rowe. I'm from Roswell, New Mexico, and this is my fourth year at NMI. Hi, I'm Gavin Maloney. I'm from Roswell, New Mexico, and this is also my fourth year here at NMI. Hi, my name is Austin Patoy. I'm from Pompo, American Samoa, and this is my first year at the Institute. We also have some alumni with us this evening. Please introduce yourselves and tell us what year you graduated and what you're doing now. Uh, Bruno, let's start with you. Hello, my name is Bruno Bruhart. I graduated high school from NMMI in 2006. And currently I'm an English teacher in Lovington, New Mexico at the high school there. Hi, my name is Brian Bourne. I graduated from NMMI in 2011. I'm currently a programmer in Chicago in finance. Hi, my name is Brandon Bourne. I graduated from NIMI in 2008, and I'm currently a college engineering professor and starting a company in San Francisco. Hi, my name is Peggy Bourne. I am the parents of Brandon and Brian, and I'm here to really reiterate what a wonderful education my children had at NIMI. So now let's begin with Ariana. Tell us why you picked NMMI. I picked New Mexico Military Institute, especially for the education, but the leadership also struck out to me. Um, the opportunities that New Mexico Military Institute has given me so far um, has really proven to me what NAMI will do for me in the future. Connor? Gavin? Um, I chose NMI because the education is top notch and I saw it as an opportunity to better myself as a leader and I was up for a challenge. For me, I'm from Roswell, so the schools here are not quite as good as the level of academics that um, NMI has. So just the level of academics to me felt that I would get into a better college if I came here to NMI and just stay in public school. So were you guys worried at all when you heard the word military in the school's title, Austin? Um, yes, I was worried because I was scared that it would be hard for me to adjust to the military life, but it turned out to be quite awesome and a good experience. So what were the elements of NMMI that persuaded you all to give it a try? Connor? 
Um, the elements that were that persuaded to give it to give me <laughs> give it a try were that uh, it was a good school and that academics were great and. I always like the thought of a boarding school because not everyone is different and everyone has to wear the same uniforms and the same things and have to do the same stuff as well. What about you, Austin? NRMI is very famous for creating leaders, so I would say leadership. Ladies, Megan, Ariana? Um, I'd have to reiterate what everyone else has been saying. The, ed the education is definitely a major one, especially coming from New Mexico, because we don't have the greatest education. So the fact that this is such a, um, a credit, yeah, prestigious and accredited school, it really um, looks better for us from us in New Mexico. I also have to reiterate on the education. The education really stuck out to me when I was first looking at the Mexico Military Institute. But before I came here, I wouldn't speak to anybody at all. I was incredibly shy. I was the wallflower at the back of the classroom. And something New Mexico Military Institute has really proven to me is that it, I mean, it's made me a leader. I am who I am today because of it. So what was it like? for you guys going to a military school that's focused on military traditions and core values. Gavin? Um, for me, my older brother came here before, three years before I came. So I knew that the whole military values and the really disciplined core was gonna do good for me in the long run because once you get to college and stuff, you won't have set rule that you have to go by, you can kind of live and die by yourself. And then the good thing about Mexico Military Institute's strict schedule, although it is strict, it does teach you to just get used to the lifestyle of having a, a strict schedule. So when you move on to college, then you're just used to it and you're, you don't blow off classes. What about you ladies, Megan, Ariana? Um. I think because this is a military school, we have learned so many different uh, good habits. Like uh, Gavin was saying that it is a strict schedule, so you learn time management. You learn when to do things in the most efficient way in order to get the most out of your day. The discipline especially, you grow up and you mature quickly. Um, when I go back home, when I hang out with my peers, I, I really see how much I've matured in relation to them. So the discipline is a big thing. So what did you think when you first saw the campus, Austin? When I first walked into the school campus, um, it was mind blowing. Um, from the statues to the barracks, it was Beautiful and clean, just mind blowing. That's all I have to say. Ariana, you had an interesting comment. Uh, we talked about this a lot because I went through the admissions process with you a couple of years ago. What did you think of the school? So I had recently finished reading um, King Arthur and His Knights, and when I came here for my tour, Jasmine was actually my tour guide, and I just I remember looking over at my dad and saying. Dad, I'm gonna live in a castle. And my dad looked at me and said, you're gonna be Guinevere. So uh, I thought that I'm going to and see it was my version of King Arthur's castle. Uh, so I got one of our uh, YouTube comments just now. And one question is, if I have any medical problems like allergies, is it possible for me to attend? Any of you have allergies? I do. I have major allergies, and because it's uh, you're going to be in a new climate unless you're from New Mexico, you're going to get the allergies, but you can attend here. I mean, you can go to the infirmary, which is basically our nurse's office, and they can help you with everything, so you'll be taken care of. We also have a question from our Snapchat real quick. Um, how is the food? Austin, what do you think about the food? If I were to compare the food we get here to the food I get at home, I would say the food here is pretty good. 
Brian, Brandon, what did you guys think of the food when you were here at the school? So the food there is amazing. There's both the, um, the standard meals are great. And you get a lot of choices cycled throughout the year. They're constantly changing the menu and there's always, and there's always healthy, great tasting options. One of the things that I participated in was etiquette dinners while I was there, which is about twice a, twice a year, once a semester, um, they'll take an entire group of cadets in and feed them a gourmet meal just to help um, introduce manners and how to interact in a formal setting, which I always thought was kind of fun. Plus, the food is amazing at those. So the food on par is really great. Uh, I was sorry. I was laughing because there's there was a joke when I was there that whatever you didn't finish the night before ended up in the eggs the next day. Um, but that I, I would probably agree that on par the food is is, is one for growing kids. It's everything that you need. Uh, also, they have a great salad bar. So if you don't like what they're serving, you can go get salad and PB and J and whatever else you want. So don't worry about the food. So we have, um, switching back gears here a little bit, we have a number of students that are international um, that, and also come near and far um, from various countries. In Austin, you're here from uh, one of the U.S. territories, American Samoa. What made you come from so far away? I knew that NMMI had a lot more to offer me than what I had at home. So one of the things that and then my offered me was a great education. Um, so I took up the challenge and decided to come to school here. So right now I have a good education. I'm disciplined and I also have a good experience from being leader. And I'm gonna use it to live my life when I head on into the real world, which is outside when I graduate junior college. Well, now let's switch over to the alumni for a moment. Tell me a little bit more about your time at NMMI. No war stories, okay? Uh, let's start with you, Bruno. Uh, I first started attending NMMI in 2002, and I was a short, fat kid, scared out of my wits. But by the time I graduated in 2006, I was still a short, chubby kid, but I had my head on straight. It was the best experience a young man in New Mexico could have ever accomplished. And I cannot sing its praises enough. It really molded me into a gentleman and an upstanding citizen, if I must be honest. Brian, what about you? Um, so to talk a little on the core concept of, the, uh, of this YouTube, when I first went to NMMI, I was I had absolutely no intentions of joining the military. During my time there, I actually kind of went back and forth on whether I wanted to maybe go Air Force or Navy or something like that. But when I first got there, I had no intentions whatsoever. And by the time I left, I was pretty happy with going to a, an engineering school. I ended up going to Columbia University and it was very affirming for me. I got to go, I got to be, gain an appreciation for it and know that, you know, I could have succeeded in either place, but I got to find out what was right for me, which was really great. Um, and through it all, I got to learn how to be a real adult and prepare myself for the challenges that were to come with, um, college and later into my career, which was an amazing thing to get. Uh, yeah, I'd like to echo that. If you go to New Mexico Military Institute, upon graduation, you are light years ahead of your peers. You just, you have a maturity that's been forged in the fires of, you know, coming into adulthood in this great leadership laboratory environment. So you're learning things that, and the cadets there, um, Ariana just made a great point that she comes home 
and the maturity level is completely different between the people that she went to middle school with and the people that she's going to school with now. And that's because you are expected to look after yourself. When something goes wrong, you're, you're expected to solve it. Um, and that experience at that age is probably one of the best things that you can do in life. I, yeah, I got out of there and I went to college and the rest of my, my uh, floor mates were all trying to figure out how to do laundry for the first time. One guy had a towel, a full body towel, you know, maybe this big, and he shrank it down to about this size because he did it in warm water and then on high heat. And he's like, I don't understand what happened. I was like, you never learned how to do laundry? So uh, just basic little things. It all compiles over those four years to turn you in, into an incredible person at the end of it. So it's not about military or non-military. It's who do you want to be upon graduation. And, mili and New Mexico military and will help you achieve that. So Peggy, what was it like sending as a as a mom parent here? What 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 chose you to send your your sons to NIMI? Well, first of all, they both wanted it. We had looked at a lot of schools in our neighborhood where the kids would live at home, um, uh, but we felt that they needed something a little bit more rigorous than the public schools could offer. So NIMI was a fantastic uh, alternative and they both loved it. Um, I, I would like to say that um, the education is rigorous, but the professors are phenomenal and they're very dedicated to their tasks. So there's a lot of support out there and um, you know, nobody really, it's difficult to fall through the cracks. Uh, if, if you know, you really, there's a lot of places you can go for help um, in both academics and living problems. Um, the other thing is that there is a junior college attached to this school so that the kids can excel as they need to excel. So if you're great in math, you can go forth in math. If you're terrific in English, you can move into the junior college in English as soon as you're ready. Uh, and that was a real plus for us. Um, but having said that, we didn't want our kids to go to high school in a bubble. Uh, and NIMI has a very diverse student body. Um, there are really kids there from all walks of life, from all levels of academic ability, from all levels of sports ability, um, you know, much like you find in the rest of the world. And that was very important to us. We didn't want our kids to grow up feeling like they were privileged in some way. Um, and believe me, NIMI will wipe that out of you <laughs> quickly. Um, so you do, you, you learn the self-discipline, you learn that life goes on, um, you make your way, there's a lot of support and you come out with an outstanding education and the ability to uh, move on to pursue your goals. So we, we just are extremely grateful we found Nimi. So. Well, and I, I like the part where you talked about goals, um, because the biggest piece we want our students to take away from here when they come to the school is having a set of core values that they can use and apply in their daily life in leadership uh, capacity. Um, Brian, what were some of the core values that you took away from your time here at NIMI? So I think one of the biggest things that got me hard was um, honor there's there's three core values at nimi it's duty honor, duty honor and achievement and for me honor really hit me hard with there's a there's an amount of personal respect that everybody walking away from nimi gets you have this core set of values that you can actually hold true to and that you know you've gone through enough that you know that these are your moral tenets and you can use them as guideposts to steer you through some of the harder times you'll have down the road. Because as great as everybody makes out, you know, life after high school to be, there's a lot of hard times post high school that you need to have kind of steering posts to use and to help you navigate the waters. And NIMI is great at really forming those posts for you. And Bruno, how do you think your time changed 
since you've left me? Well, I'm a lot more self-disciplined because of the Institute, uh, as the Bourne family was harking on. A lot of a lot of it is up to you. Yes, you have your comrades in arms in the form of fellow cadets, but a lot of it weighs upon you. And how do you take adversity and grow from that? Well, the Institute will give you plenty of opportunities to better yourself. Not only that, but time management. It, that's a skill, and this place will certainly teach you that. We are so obsessed with time and how do we make the most out of our days. Well, NIMI will certainly teach you the skills and give you that leg up over your peers so you can just be the best you can be, really. So I wanted to put a reminder to our viewers that you can ask questions uh, during the event tonight. Just post them on social media using hashtag NMMIFuture and we will get them answered on air. Post them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, put them in the YouTube chat or snap them to NMMI Life. Uh, one question that's been popping up uh, a little bit that I wanted to get to was the admissions requirements for the high school and the junior college program. So on the high school side and the college, the minimum requirements for the school is a 2.0 GPA. And then we have a holistic review process where we look at your leadership skills, your volunteer activities, your, um, if you're involved in athletics, if you're involved in band, um, church, we rank you on a uh, scoring system. And we um, also, we also look at not just what you're involved in. So if you're not, you don't have a lot of leadership, we look at test scores, your transcripts, and then we make that determination based on what you submit. So the first step is you go online to our website at www.nmmi.edu and you click uh, apply now and you select the uh, term you want to come into. We do uh, for both the high school and college admit in the spring semester and the fall semester. And our deadlines for admission are July 10th for fall and December 10th for spring semester. Um, when you apply online, we will um, pull your information off our website and then we will send you the required documents to fill out. And then it's on you on completing your paperwork and getting it back to us. Then we'll know within a two week turnaround once we receive all of your forms, if you've been uh, admitted or if there's something missing and we go from there. Um, so now let's talk about the uh, academics for a minute. Um, Gavin, tell me what is a typical class size? Um, and I can speak for both high school and junior college classes because like um, Peggy said that before you could both be in high school or if you excel in a certain subject you can be in college. So the typical class size is probably from 8 to 12 students. Um, and in some of the high school classes as you get a little more advanced um, for example, in Spanish 3 last year I took, there was only two students. So that really helps the small class sizes. They just help um, get more like in touch with the teacher. If, you, if you're missing something or if you're not understanding a subject, you can just go in and see your teachers. And because the class sizes are, small, are so small that you can talk to them in class and they're, they're, they're all willing to help you. And Megan, how hard is it to get into the junior college classes? Um, well, having been here uh, last year, I, did, I got first pick at all my classes, but because there are so few of us and there's so many choices for all the classes, it's really not that hard to get into any class you want. It's just whether or not you have the requirements to get into it. But if you do, there, it's easy to get into. Connor and Ariana? What are the teachers like at NMMI? Um, Connor? For me, for me, before I came to NMMI, um, all my teachers that I had told me when, when you go to high school, teachers are going to be strict and, and not very understanding. And so as I came here, that's exactly what I was going to think. But as, as you go through school, you realize that teachers are like very understanding and they're not as strict. So for the most part, most teachers are nice and very understanding. Ariana, what about you? 
the teachers and the professors here are incredible. They work with you, they help you, and like uh, Gavin said, the class sizes are incredibly small, so they always have face-to-face -face communication with you. If you're not understanding something, you can go on for tutoring, they'll help you. I mean, they want to see you succeed, and they will do anything in their power to watch you succeed. So I'm trying to think back here and in, in seeing, you know, differences here. Um, Austin, you're a new recruit at training this year. Can you share what a typical day for a rat new recruit is at, like at, NIM, like at NIMI? So basically, I wake up in the morning for formation and breakfast. And then after breakfast, I just try to prep up for my classes. And then I hang out with friends during free period. And then after my free period, I just head out to PT. After PT, and then I just do whatever I want, watch movies, and then study. That's all. Brandon, when you were here, how different is it now at NIMI than it was when you were here as a cadet? Uh, not, I mean, I'm not currently there, but from his description, it sounds pretty much the same. The emphasis is on the study hall in the evenings, which is probably one of the most important part of the curriculum, something that doesn't exist at a non-boarding institute. So that three hours that you just reserve every night and every single weeknight you learn how to study, it's it'll stay with you for the rest of your life. You learn how to reserve chunks for that. Um, not that there's anything wrong with learning how to watch TV in the evenings, but it is always better to have some sort of formal schedule and something that you're trying to learn. So it carries over into college and then it carries over into the real world. You learn how to make your bed in the morning, you learn how to show up to work on time, and then you learn how to study in the evening and study when you need to to get things done. So it sounds pretty similar. So we got a, we got a question from YouTube. Um, we have a student that's coming in specifically as a tennis player. Will I also be required to have all of or some of the same cadet training? I think this one's a great question for Megan. Um, so I was in tennis in both high school and college. <clears throat> and um, you do the exact same thing as everybody else. It's just during the designated PT time from 3.45 to 5.15, 5.30, you'll be at the tennis court instead of at core PT, which is very nice. And another question that we had, um, is there bullying or hazing at the Institute? Uh, Gavin, can you speak a little bit more on this? Um, I know the common misconception is that the military school is going to be a lot of hazing and bullying, but um, in our minds, a strict no bullying or hazing, uh, no hazing. So um, they make sure that all students who they make it a big, um, big stick, so people will get in a lot of trouble if they get caught hazing or bullying. So that kind of weeds out all the potential people who think it's right to haze and bully. That just kind of scares them away from doing it. Um, so, it, one other question that we have is um, a little, little different. You guys can explain on this one. What are the different uniforms, Ariana? Okay, so the uniform that we typically wear, our class C's, that's our everyday um, academic uniform. Um, ACUs are on Mondays and Thursdays, and we wear summer A's on Saturdays and Sundays in the fall. And we switch over to winter A's when it gets a little bit colder and be with brass on Sundays in the late fall. How are the living arrangements here at the school? Gavin? Um, so there's three stories um, of rooms. The bottom story is uh, college males. Second story is high school males. And the third story is all females. So especially uh, when you're a recruit, you will just be in a room with you and then your roommate. You both have individual beds, desks. Um, you, sh you have two sinks, two, two uh, mirrors. So 
you have to learn how to share a room and a space, but you're not you're not sharing a desk or a mirror. You both have separate mirrors and sinks and stuff. But you, the one thing that you will have to learn is how to like communicate with your roommate and how to not only like you have to be a good roommate because they have to do the same things as you. So usually you and your roommate at the beginning are the best friend. Are you? Your roommate is your best friend because you're always with them and you two are going through the same thing. So you'll really bond with your roommate. Brandon, do you still talk to your roommates now? Uh, well, I had probably eight um, over the course of the four years that I was there just through promotions. Like my senior year as a first sergeant, I actually roomed with two people. I had, um, we were in the Alpha Hole, which is basically the corner area that's reserved for uh, senior personnel. And they were also first sergeants and it's a bigger room, so it was fun. Uh, I still talk to Jesus occasionally. I actually just got back from a trip to Hawaii where I saw my best friend from NIMI, um, Steel, who's actually now in the Coast Guard, which was a bit of a surprise because he was from Roswell. And actually when he came in, had no intention of you know going career military uh, whereas I actually kind of did at 14 when I came in, I was like, I think the military might be a good choice for me. And by the time I graduated, I was ready to kind of move away from the military side of things and go civilian engineering. It's, yeah, it's, it's, these are your, they're your, what's called your rat buddies, your recruits at training and they stay with you for the rest of your life. So I have a question that came through from a mom asking Peggy, what was the hardest part in letting your boys go? Oh, it is tough um, when they're that young. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to be in Albuquerque, so I could maintain some sort of communication with them. Um, you know, the education was so phenomenal that most of our conversations really were about the things they were learning um, from an educational standpoint and from a leadership standpoint. Uh, and then you get to see them. I mean, you actually see them quite a bit. So there's parents weekend and there's Thanksgiving and there's a pretty nice break at Christmas. Um, you actually get to see them more than you would think. And the relationship you have with them is really strong because you're not bent on all the discipline you'd have to do if they were at home. So, you know, NIMI molds the discipline and the, the good habits and, you know, you get to work on, you know, their thought process and their sort of general outlook on life. Um, I, I, after the first probably three or four weeks, I found it quite easy. So I, I really, it goes better than you would think. Right? So, Another question that I just got off of the YouTube live feed, I'm going to give this one to Bruno. Uh, what happens when you get in trouble at NMMI? All right. Well, I got in trouble a lot because I was a little hellraiser, but I turned out for the better, it must be said. Uh, when you typically get in trouble, you get push-ups, that sort of thing, some sort of physical activity to make you think twice about why you screwed up or you can get stuck uh, with tours and a tour back in my day was one hour of marching about the barracks with your rifle uh, and that was on the weekend so when you wanted to escape the place for a bit but you had tour squad well you had to go march around instead by the time I graduated I had walked marched 415 tours so i didn't seem to learn my lesson whilst at the institute but all those tours did make me a better person because i really enjoy my weekends now <laughs> um another question that i have that came through is there a student body um do we have a student body club what are some of the leadership roles I'd like to open this up to everybody. I'll start with Connor and Gavin, and then you guys can explain what leadership opportunities you're involved in right now. So I wouldn't say there's a, a student body per se, but the Corps of Cadets is more or less the same thing. There's leadership roles. There's 15 troops, which all have 
up to 10 leadership positions in each one, um, as well as regimental positions, which is another probably 20 or so. But there's extracurricular activities that you can do leadership in. For example, I do football and baseball uh, on the team captain and those, as well as National Honor Society for the high schoolers, which has um, a president, vice president, and secretary. So you, there's a lot of different activities that you can do to have a, a leadership position. Connor? Um, I'm also in baseball and football, and I'm also a team captain for those. Um, I am an operations non-commissioned officer for India Troop, which were like kind of like the paperwork people, I guess. Um, and so uh, that's just my my position and my role in my troop and throughout the corps as well. Ladies, what about you? What, what leadership roles are you in right now? Um, like Gavin, I'm in National Honor Society. That's a big one for me. I'm also the chief editor of the Maverick Magazine, and I also run the English Club. Um, I'm also in the Leadership Reaction Course Club, so I'm a facilitator at the Ropes Course. That's a lot of leadership and responsibility. Um, like Connor, I'm an Operations non Commissioned Officer for Lima Troop, so those are my leadership. And I am the public affairs officer, so I'm, I deal with public affairs. I'm basically the picture taker. I'm, so I'm the chief of photo squad, which is our, it's our club here for those cadets that like to take pictures. Say they take pictures around the school of just different activities. I was also the team captain of my high school tennis team. So before we jump back into um, the rest of the questions that are coming off the live feed, one of them that was pretty important, um, I was just asked to talk more about the uh, financial aid opportunities. So on the high school side, we have scholarships. Um, there's merit and need-based awards. You have to be admitted before we, uh, if our, our financial aid department starts to look at you for scholarships. Then on the um, college side, we do have uh, FAFSA financial aid. So you have to go online to the student gov site and fill out your federal aid and then submit it and request it to come to NMMI. And then our financial aid department here will take a look and see if you qualify for any um, unsubsidized, subsidized loans or any grants or other scholarships that can assist with our college program. So now let's go back to one question that I have. Um, it, is it hard in the sense of training and adapting to life at NMMI? Um, Austin? Um, no, it's not because you have your cadres. You also have the staff, um, the faculty staff here at NEMI. You can also talk to the nurses if you have problems with your health. Um, but the cadres, I would say they actually helped me adjust to this new lifestyle. And you also have your red buddies. Your red buddies, um, they help motivate you to be better, stronger, also smarter. Oh, sorry. What, what about you, Brian? Was it hard for you when you first started here um, to learn the routines of the school? So when I first started there, Brandon was actually a senior at the time. So I'd had some, a little bit of preparation in that I, I kind of knew what was going to be expected of me. I knew the I knew a few of the ins and outs. I you know had a little bit of warning, but I will still say that I was I was a bit scared out of my mind when I first got there. You know, it's going to a military school. All you really see on TV and through you know all media at the moment is you know military schools. Oh, that's where they send the bad kids and. I was, you know, headed down there and I was worried like, oh, what if I'm surrounded by, you know, bad kids? And that was just so unfounded that it's, you know, a little funny in retrospect. Um, it was, there's some of the greatest people that I've ever met down there, some of the nicest. Um, I did not meet a single kid that I think you could, you know, consider as, you know, the bad kid, the one who got sent there or anything like that. It was all 
it was all people that wanted to be there and wanted to improve themselves. And, you know, there's no kind of you're forced to be there. It's, you know, you're there for you. And that was kind of what really helped me settle in there. Um, like Austin spoke to, there is a lot of support structure there. Your cadre, which is your initial leadership, so your squad leaders who are in charge of five people, your platoon sergeants who are in charge of 30 or 40, your first sergeants who are in charge of 80, you know, everybody is there to really support you and really make sure you succeed. And if you're having trouble or, you know, you have any kind of issues, there's always people that you can bring them up to. Your rap buddies are always there to talk with you about personal things. Your cadre and your leadership is always there to talk to you and to really hear you if you're struggling, you know, within the leadership laboratory. And then further, there's always people around, especially in the leadership, that are there to help you if you're struggling academically, which was, you know, the academics there are tough, but they force you to learn and they force you to get good. So just the support structure there makes it really easy to adapt to all of these hard things. And it's amazing. I am looking back on it amazed at what I achieved despite how scared I was going into it. So Peggy, um, one question that just came through was what's the first day like as a parent when you're dropping your student off? Can you explain a little more about that? Actually, I, I found it pretty exciting. It was, you know, I was learning just as much uh, about the school as my child was. Uh, and, you know, I, I felt like I had to be strong because they had chosen to go there and, you know, they were going to have to go through things that they everybody was going through. But, you know, it's no longer the mom can save you. So um, which I appreciated. <laughs> um, so the first day actually is is good fun. I, you see their rooms, you can see the facility, which is uh, the classrooms, the rest of the campus, which is phenomenal. Um, and you can learn about the town, which is pretty safe, generally speaking. And uh, you, know, you, you send your child off to, to another town, maybe in another state. Um, you gain some confidence that they can get themselves around and, um, and be safe and take you know, the bus or walk. Um, and that there you know, are things to do. Um, so the first day was, you know, I actually kind of found it exciting. So it's it's good. And Connor, um, since you live here in town, was it a difficult transition for you to move into NIMI and be prepared here? Um, I think because I do live in Roswell, that it was more of a relief for me because I knew that my parents were only three, four miles away. That if, if something did happen to me, that they didn't have to fly over here or drive for three hours and that it was only four minutes away. So I think that it was a relief for me, more so for people coming from other states and over different countries because that they are so close and that if I need something, they're three minutes away that they can bring whatever I need to me. Well, speaking about being you know, close to home, Austin, um, what did you do to prepare to attend NIMI as far away as you live? Well, before I came here, my mom sent me to Hawaii to try to spend some time on my own, try to get used to being far away from home. I had to spend like three months in Hawaii and then I came straight to New Mexico after that. And by the time I came here, I was kind of used to the lifestyle of being far away from home, but I still that had that little homesick in me, but it's gone now because I have my cadres, I have my rap buddies that take my mind off home. <laughs> That's all. So a different question 
coming through. How much uh, PT do you have to do? Ariana, can you take this one? Um, let's let's move and ask Connor. Um, I've been in sports ever since I came here, so I've never actually been in PT. But we do have to take the PT test, which is is a two mile run, push ups, sit ups, um, pull ups, and I believe that's all the the PT test is. But I've never been in PT, so I'm not sure what PT is exactly like. Um, Austin, you're you're not involved in sports. What about you? <laughs> I have to go to PT three times a day. Sorry, three times a week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 3.45 up to 5. Um, so we basically um, have two groups. I think there's the A group and then there's the B, C, D, and F group. If you're in the A group, you can only go Monday and Wednesday, I believe so. So as of now, I wish I was in the A group, but I'm in the F group, so that's all. That's okay, you can work out from there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, switch gears here. Um, I know a big part of NMMI is being a leader in the Corps of Cadets. Bruno, what were some of your biggest leadership opportunities you had when you were a cadet at NMMI? By the time I graduated, I was a uh, high school cadet first sergeant, so almighty echo. And I was in charge of about 60 cadets. And at that age, 17, 18, trying to take care of a whole bunch of teenagers, that's a lot to put on a person. But that kind of leadership experience and working with your cadre, working with your peers to make sure everything runs like a machine, that's hell of a good training for a young man and it you can really take that into the world and the transition is so much easier so by the time i became a manager at one of my first jobs it was a piece of cake if you can manage 80 teenagers you can manage four adults <laughs> Brandon, how has it helped you in your life Brandon, how, how has it helped you in your life? Sure. Uh, honestly, it's probably been the single greatest contributing factor. Um, so when you, I, like Bruno, I was a high school first sergeant and I was in charge of the Alpha Dogs. We had 80 students in our corps or in our troop. And it was, uh, it was a handful. There was always something going on. There was always some student that was falling behind in their grades, or there was, you know, some scuffle between two people that were friends that are no longer friends over something that's really stupid, but now it's breaking into an argument in the middle of formation and you're figuring out how to transfer them squads. And all of that teaches you people management at 16, 17, 18 that you just cannot get until you're in your 30s and 40s. Um, I carried it with me into college where I started running the clubs like club ski team, um, club soccer, and things like that, just as a freshman in college. Uh, I ended up or organizing a lot of the engineering departments, such as the uh, the, the tutors. Um, and then I carried it into my first startup when I was 22, when I became a professor at 23, and I was running a class load of 30, 40 people. And then I carried it to my first job in the corporate world, where I was in charge of a group of eight people that were teaching up and down the coast and organizing these million dollar budgets and I've carried it into all of my later startups because honestly when you get it at that age it just becomes part of who you are it's it's natural to you as breathing you don't have to study leadership anymore and figure out what works and what doesn't because you've already done it um, so a question that I'm getting right now um, how do credits transfer when students leave an MMI um, so I'd like to first ask Ryan if you can explain your experience um, when you uh, transitioned out of NIMI. 
Sure thing. <laughs> so I, uh, I transferred to, I went to Columbia University and I transferred, I think, 25 credits. It turns out that since um, NMMI is a uh, junior college and it's accredited, the credits actually tend to transfer a lot easier than AP credits do. So most of the time, it's if you've got an AP course, you can claim two out of generally about two thirds of the credits um, when you go into college. Whereas if you've already taken a college class, you can transfer the entirety of your credits as long as the um, as long as the junior college as long as wherever you're transferring from is accredited. And since NMMI is I got to transfer all of mine. Um, Brandon actually got to transfer even more. He uh, he transferred 40 or something like that. Um, and so it turned out to just be really easy based on where NIMI stands as, as an accredited college. And you get, yeah. Um, I'm gonna let Brandon talk more about it since he, uh, since he did so well with credit transferring. Uh, nope, yeah, <laughs> so the credit transferring turned out to be a, just a godsend. Um, I came in to the University of Denver with 55 and a half credits, which made me a second semester sophomore. Um, I turned that into a degree in political science, a bachelor's degree in political science, a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, and a master's degree in mechanical engineering with a focus on nanoscale engineering and minors in math, physics, and chemistry in five years because of New Mexico Military Institute. So. And you got senior housing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know that some cadets that are current on this uh, chat tonight, they um, are also taking a lot of college classes to hopefully uh, do what you are doing. Ariana, can you explain how it's working for you? Sure. Um, right now, I'm in two college classes. Um, I was in a college class my freshman year also. Um, the college classes I'm taking this year are communication, so public speaking and um, college U.S. history. So um, that is dual credit, so I get the credit for high school as well as college. Um, so a question I'm getting right now with We've stressed a lot about academics, but what do you guys do on the weekends? Uh, Gavin, let's open it up to you first. Um, I probably have a little easier than a lot of the other students here because I also live in Roswell. So usually on Saturdays and Sundays when I don't have either like core activities or, or any athletics, I go home on the weekends and hang out there and get to, you know, eat some home cooked meals and sleep in my own bed. But I know a lot of my other friends that don't um, that don't live in Roswell. There's still a lot of stuff to do, um, more than you would think in Roswell. We have two movie theaters. You can go watch a movie. You can go bowling. Um, we do have a, a decent mall, so you go shopping if, you, if you're into that stuff. So, although it may seem like there's not a lot of stuff to do, you'll really you'll find something to do, especially to get off post on the weekends. Brian, as an alum, what did you do when you um, were here at the on the post? <laughs> Sorry. Um, for what specifically? Sorry. Just in your free time or on the weekends, what did you what did you do outside of academics? Oh, of course. Um, so I there when I was there. I don't know if it's still there. There used to be a game room that had a bowling alley. And it had a bunch of arcade games. It had pool. It had um, my junior and senior year. They put in a bunch of Xboxes and Playstations. Um, so that was a pretty pretty frequent hangout for me. We used to be able to we were able to go downstairs and hang out in this environment that was really quite fun. You know, we got supplied snacks. We could sit there and just kind of be you know really regular teenagers and just you know hang out and relax and kind of get away from anything that might be bothering us elsewhere so i spent a lot of time there i spent a lot of time um i was also a ropes course facilitator like ariano is now um so i also spent a lot of time out on the ropes course i learned a lot there that i actually carry into my hobbies now um 
one of my big hobbies now is rock climbing. And I learned all of the belay and the safety and all of those techniques while I was down there um, from the head of the ropes course. And I think he's still there, Eric Evertson, who is amazing. And so I, you know, spent a lot of time just kind of relaxing and doing things that were interesting to me as hobbies. Brandon, what about you? What did you do in your free time outside of academics? Uh, honestly, I was on, I was soccer, swimming and track. So there was almost always some sort of an athletic event going on on the weekends. Um, I was, I think at that age, I almost always had a girlfriend in Albuquerque. So um, most weekends I was doing the two and a half hour drive to and from Albuquerque if I had the time. And then you have friends with houses in Roswell, you go hang out with them, their mother cooks you food. Uh, there's, the, I remember there's, oh God, I hope it's on there, the Whataburger, which was like a block and a half away, and that was a great spot. Um, and then the Dairy Queen, the if you just wanted to jump across the street real quick and grab grab a blizzard. Uh, there, there's plenty of stuff to do. It's Honestly, it's better than being, uh, the weekends at home in Albuquerque, in my opinion, which honestly I didn't spend any of them, so I wouldn't really know, because it's less, it's it's structured in the right ways. There's always something to do in the mornings, um, and then it's like, hey, you've got all this free time, and you're always trying to pack it in. It's like, I have four hours that I can go off post and do whatever I want, so let's go catch a movie, let's go you know, across the street to the track and do some stuff there, like, let's have some fun, rather than just like, what are we gonna do this weekend? Same thing we did last weekend, Pinky, try to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're getting close to the end of our program. So before um, I wrap this up, I wanted to just remind everybody of a couple of important uh, uh, events coming up. If you're applying for spring semester, the deadline for admissions is December 10th. Um, fall, you guys still have time to sign until July 10th. Um, however, if you'd like to learn more about our campus, come and check us out. We have an open house coming up on November 11th. And it starts at 7.30 in the morning. The financial aid, the registrar, uh, teachers are going to be here as well. As for high school students, you can t do your test tour and interview. And on the college side, you'll be able to also talk about um, the service academy programs, military careers, and learn more about athletics uh, with our um, instructors that will be here to uh, talk to talk with you guys. Um, so let's wrap up tonight's event with one last question for all of you. Why should someone pick an MMI if they're not going into the military? And I will cue that with Ariana first. So someone should pick an MMI if they're not going into the military, um, especially for their education. Um, that's a big thing for me and the leadership. Um, coming from a incredibly introverted middle schooler to being exposed to all this individual freedom really opened me up. So if you're looking for um, a great education for becoming a better individual or just opening up and just pushing out of your comfort zone, then this is a place for you. Um, just to add on with what Ariana's saying, I think the experience of it being a boarding school, like for high schoolers, it's such a different experience than what you would get going to your normal public school. I mean, it's, it, it's not a big sleepover, but it kind of is because you're always near your friends. And it's just, it's definitely something I don't regret doing, that's for sure. Um, I think someone should pick MMI if they're not choosing the military path. Definitely for the academics and also most importantly, definitely for the friendships you make and people say they friendships last a lifetime and I truly think that friendships last a lifetime because um, I'm actually going to Mexico this summer with some of my friends that I made my freshman year and so friendships and academics is definitely the main reasons why to why to come to NIMI if you're not going to choose the military path. And I'm just going to further harp on the academics because it really is so important here at NIMI because everyone who comes here 
and whoever, everyone who stays a long time knows how important academics are. And usually the people who stay a long time are the ones who have their time management figured out. They know, they know when, when is the time to do homework, when is the time to go to your friend's room and hang out, when is the time to just lay in your bed and go to sleep early, like maybe you don't have a little, some homework and you can go to sleep early. But time management, I would say, from when I started to now is much higher than all my uh, public school friends, so. Um, I would say that if you're looking to perfect your leadership skills, um, NMMI offers the best experience for that. And another thing, um, education, yes, of course, education, and independence. If you want to be, if you want to learn how to live on your own, NMMI is the best option. Um, they'll teach you how to fix your bed, um, how to tidy up your room, how to fix um, good hygiene, and to do your laundry. That's basically it. <laughs> For the alum, what about you guys? What's your uh, takeaway that students should know about NMMI? Bruno? Everything the cadets have just said is absolutely correct. Uh, but NMMI is definitely on the path for self-betterment. So if you want to do that, I highly recommend this place. You'll just be better off in the long run. To really further the the non-military side of the institute it's the institute is never about oh we're trying to push people towards the military the institute uses the, its connections with the military as a framework for really self-betterment and turning turning people that come in as you know young kids that don't necessarily have everything already memorized to really self-sufficient people so that you get such a head start on all of your peers in your current age group. So while you might not come in as, you know, knowing absolutely everything and nobody, nobody ever does, you leave knowing how to take care of yourself, how to manage your time and you have those habits and with a back academic background that is, so stellar it's it's unbelievable and so you come out miles ahead of almost anywhere else you can go and it's really wonderful that the institute provides this for you and in no way shape or form does it try to push you towards oh we're here to funnel you towards a military school or towards a specific branch or towards any kind of military career at all um I'll add that of all of my friends that I went to the Institute with, I think maybe maybe one or two out of 10 are in the military now. Uh, most of them chose to go off to other colleges and to you know choose careers in field out of that. And they, what they gained from the Institute was inability to really excel at that. When me and my friends all got to college, it was, you know, we knew how to manage our time. We knew when we had to study and when we could, you know, go goof off. We knew how to take care of ourselves, how to feed ourselves and clothe ourselves and, you know, do our laundry and, you know, all of these things that you don't think about, but you don't necessarily get at a normal high school. You learn at NIMI and you get to establish those habits early. And as anybody will ever tell you, habits are all about repetition. So when you start the repetition early, you you really ingrain it much further. Uh, I mean, I guess to summarize my earlier points, the Institute will give you the skills and the strength of personality you need to accomplish whatever you want in life. It will give you the personality to charm others and to, you know, help further your career. Really, it's probably the best all round education you're going to receive. I, I say that blanket statement at any high school, it is comparable and the leadership laboratory will help build you into a better person. My 
kids first started at NIMI, I used to say that New Mexico Military Institute was the best kept secret in New Mexico. Uh, I'm not so sure that's true anymore. A lot of people have discovered it and now understand the value of an education from uh, NMMI. And um, I, I think it's it's if it's something you're interested in, you ought to start trying to pursue it uh, now and find get yourself into a slot. It's it's really an outstanding institution. Well, that's going to be our last question for tonight, but we will be glad to answer any additional questions that you might have off air. So if you have any, please feel free to email me at admissions at nmmi.edu or post on social media or Snapchat us at NMMI Life. Remember too, we will have our open house on November 11th. We also have several nights with NMMI coming up in Hawaii. We have uh, a few here in New Mexico and also in Arizona. Um, this fall. And so uh, check our website out for dates near you, and then we'll host several in the spring all across uh, various states. We'll also be hosting a Snapchat Q&A where you can ask questions on November 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And you can find all of this information on our website at www.nmmi.edu. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight and everybody who helped out. You guys have a great night.